Hey weirdos, welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If you are new here, hi, I'm Marla Chris. I do nail content twice a week, every week. If you like this kind of stuff, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you. So we're gonna get into very basic, very beginner friendly dip powder application. Here's the, everything that you're going to need. I got a cuticle pusher, I got a dusty brush, I got some files, dip liquids, a buffing black, my dip powder. You're also gonna need um, an orange wood stick or a toothpick or something to clean around your cuticles. This is Young Nails Swipe Solution. You can use alcohol or a dehydrator. I got some lint-free wipes, paper towels. We're gonna get started. So I'm gonna get started by pushing back my cuticles. This is gonna give you all the nail estate possible and it's going to loosen up any dead cuticle that might be on the nail. This has to come off if you want to prevent lifting of your dip powder. So once I get all of that pushed back, we're gonna go in and we're going to give our nails a little roughing up. You can do this with a buffing block. You can do this with a nail file. If you have issues with lifting, I would recommend using a nail file. I would suggest a 180 grit, but you're trying to remove the shine from the nail. Your dip will not adhere to shine. Now I'm gonna go in with my swipe solution. This is going to cleanse the nail of any oils, any dust, any debris. And again, this is going to help prevent lifting. Once we get this done, our prep will be finished. Now prep is going to be different for everybody, but this is the way I prep my nails for a longer lasting mani. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put on peel off base coat just because I don't intend to keep nails on very long. If I did, I wouldn't be able to film more content. So this is an optional step. If you need your nails to last only a couple of days, peel off base coat is a great option. I've been really liking the one from Revel Nail lately. I'm gonna have everything linked down in the box in case there's anything you feel like you need to check out or go shopping for or have questions about. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on all of the nails. Then we're gonna get into the actual dip application. So I let my peel off base coat completely dry down. It is air dried, you don't have to cure it. And now I'm gonna start the dip application. I'm gonna get into this dip powder from Revel. I'm using all Revel products today, who's shocked? But you're gonna hear my full thoughts also on the liquids a little bit later if you are curious about how I feel about those. So this color is gorgeous, it's called Peaking, and we're gonna get this on all of the nails. This is an orange wood stick. I'm gonna use this to stir up the powder. This is super important. If your powder is dense and compact, your application is gonna look a little wonky. So you wanna get that nice and light and fluffy. So now I'm gonna get in with the dip base. I'm gonna clean off one entire side of this brush and leave just a bead at the bottom, a tiny little bead, you do not need much. Less is more, you can always add hard to take away. I'm going to apply this to the entire nail from cuticle to free edge. Application will vary depending on your nail shape and your nail length, but for me, cuticle to free edge, avoiding skin. This is gonna go on your entire nail, but wherever you put this base, the powder is going to stick to. So if it leaks onto your sidewall, clean it up. I keep the orange wood stick handy for this purpose. Now I'm gonna dip in, tap off excess, and I don't want any wet spots. So I'm gonna continue dipping until it no longer looks wet. And then I'm gonna clean around the cuticle and the sidewall area with that orange wood stick. This is going to help you later with filing. It'll also help prevent against lifting because product that is adhered to your skin or your cuticle area can cause lifting on the nail. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we're gonna move on to the next nail. This entire first coat of dip 
is real time. I'm keeping it in here as real time so you can see exactly how long this process takes me. Now granted, I've been doing my nails with dip powder for quite a while. Uh, it's been about three-ish years since I've started doing my own nails with dip powder. And if you're wondering what my qualifications are to speak on such topics, there are none. <laughs> Other than my personal experience, I am not a licensed nail tech. I am just a DIYer, probably like most of you guys are. So this is how I do my dip powder nails. And again, this could vary for everybody depending on your natural nails. So if you need to do extra dips or fewer dips or build up an apex, if you need to build up an apex to your nail, if you want more strength in the center, I will leave my apex video up in the cards for you guys. I will also leave in the cards my removal and very detailed prep video in case you want to check out how to remove the dip once you've got it on your nails. So I'm moving right along here and the second dip is going to be a carbon copy of the first exactly the same way but we'll get into that here in just a bit while you're watching me finish up this application this first round of dip i figured i would touch on a couple of things that i hear a little chatter about in my facebook group if you're not in my group and you would like to be i will leave a link down in the description box for you guys but we have a lot of commonly asked questions in the group and a lot of it involves lifting and I totally get it. It's a huge problem. And there are some measures you can take to prevent that. The prep that you do is gonna be key, of course. Um, product is not usually a cause of lifting. It's usually the prep behind the product. I know that a lot of people have some very strong and polarizing opinions about water. I am one of those people. I am very anti-water when it comes to anything you're gonna put on your nails, whether it's dip, polish, gel polish, builder gel, whatever. Water is the enemy. Your nails are like sponges. They're very porous and they absorb water. So if you wash your hands before or even after you prep your nails, your nails have now expanded. And when they contract in about an hour, because it does take about an hour for your nails to release that water, when they contract back down, that's when you can get lifting. So it, was, it would be my best advice to not wash your hands for at least an hour before you do your nails. You can wash them afterwards, which is usually what I do. After I get my dip powder on, after everything is done, I will get up and wash my hands, usually before I top coat, but do not wash your hands before you do your nails. Give it at least an hour and you should be okay. So once you've gotten your dip powder on all five nails, you're gonna go in with a fluffy brush and get off as much excess as possible. So here's the deal with excess dip powder. If you apply another coat of base, cause we're gonna do another coat. If you apply your base liquid to the nail and you have excess powder on the nail, it can quickly contaminate your base liquid and no one's gonna be happy at that point cause it's gonna be unusable. This is why I feel the need to go the extra step and you don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to. I'm gonna take a stiff bristled scrubby manicure brush. You can use a toothbrush, whatever kind of scrubby brush you have. And I'm gonna make sure that I have all of that excess removed from the nail. That way I don't contaminate my dip liquids. If you've ever had your dip liquids get super like goopy and kind of look like snot, I know it's gross. Um, you're not gonna be happy about that. I'm not happy about that. So I wanna prevent that as much as possible. And a lot of that comes from just keeping everything super clean. Even when I dust off my nails, my dip base, my bottle is away from my nails. That way I don't dust powder in the direction of my liquids because that can all lead to product contamination. And you don't want to buy more products if you don't have to. So keep it clean, keep it neat. Don't get dust anywhere you're not supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on with my application. Again, this is the exact same process that I did the first time. I am speeding this up for you just because you've seen it once already. 
And then we're going to talk about Activator. And I'm going to give you a little product 101 and let you know exactly what each product does and how they work together. So I went ahead and got that second coat done. I'm gonna give you a little quick tip right here and it's on liquid care. So this is a step I like to take to make sure my liquids don't get glued shut or contaminated in some other way because these liquids can be a little sensitive. I like to take the brush out of the bottle, clean it off as much as I can, get all that liquid off of there. And then I'm gonna take a lint-free wipe, which I love, I swear by these things, but you can use a paper towel if you want if you don't have lint-free wipes. And I'm just going to clean around the neck of that bottle and slightly inside the neck of the bottle, get any of that glue off. That way I don't glue my thing together because if you've ever done that, if you know, you know, <laughs> we've all been there, but this does a good job of preventing that from getting glued shut. Now I'm gonna activate. Activator cures glue. That is its only job. So when you put activator on your nail that it has the dip base and the dip powder on it, it's going to harden it, it's gonna cure it, and it's gonna make it so you're able to file it. I like to do two coats of activator. That's probably optional, although I would recommend it. I've had experiences in the past where I've gone to file a nail, and this depends on how many coats you're doing, of course, but I have filed chunks off my nail because the product wasn't cured 100% of the way. So I like to do two coats of activator just to make sure the nail is completely cured. And I'm gonna let that dry down for about two minutes, probably doesn't need it. But once it's fully cured and fully hardened, then we can start filing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my filing routine. I'm not using an e-file for any of this. This is gonna be super beginner friendly. I'm gonna take this very, very skinny hand file. Everything is linked to my description box, by the way, in case you need anything. Um, so I'm gonna start off with my sidewalls and my free edge. And all I'm doing here is getting the shape to my nail back the way it was before I started dipping. Cause dip powder, adds thickness and bulk to your nail and it can make your shape a little wonky. So I'm just gonna take my shape back to the way it was before I started dipping. And then we're gonna do a little cuticle work. Now I know that cuticles are a big deal for a lot of people. They want that salon perfect, perfectly curved, perfectly smooth cuticle and this is how I do it. I'm gonna push back my cuticle just a little bit to expose the space between my cuticle and the dip powder. And that's the little bitty gap. This is why I like a skinny nail file. That's the little gap I'm gonna get into and really smooth out that cuticle line. 
this is going to take care of any ridges any uneven application you may have you will still have a little bit of a ledge in the back of your nail but we're going to blend all of that down with another file here in just a little bit so i'm going to do the cuticles and the edges for all of the nails and then i'm going to walk you through how i contour or blend everything together while you're watching me get the rest of the nails shaped and cuticles done, I figured I would talk to you about encapsulation because I didn't do one. And encapsulation is super optional, but there are some cases in which I would recommend you encapsulate your nails. And by encapsulate, what I mean is you put a layer of something over top to protect the color. You can do this with clear dip powder. Um, you would just apply a coat of your dip base like you normally would and dip into clear dip powder and that will protect your color against filing and buffing. You can also use gel liquids. I like to encapsulate with gel base personally. You can encapsulate with builder gel. If you were doing glitter on your nail, I would absolutely tell you to encapsulate that because if you file on top of glitter, it can make your glitter turn colors or look really dull and it's just not the look you want, especially with all the work that glitter comes with. So I would definitely recommend encapsulating if you were doing a glitter look or if you felt like you needed some more filing. For me, this was a super thin and easy application, so I didn't feel the need to encapsulate anything, which I realize is a huge risk, but I is who I is and I'm a risk taker. <laughs> if you are a e-file person and e-file person, if you like to use an e-file, <laughs> I will link for you in the cards my filing and shaping routine that I do with my e-file. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out, you can absolutely go and do that. Um, if you are new to an e-file, that's actually a pretty good tutorial, I, I think, in my humble opinion. So if you're having e-file struggles, definitely check that one out. So I'm going to finish up getting my free edge and my sidewalls and my cuticles cleaned up, and then we're gonna do some blending. So when we were doing the free edge and the sidewalls and the cuticle, we created some harsh lines. I'm going to take this very soft, very worn out 180 grit file, and I'm going to just smooth out all of those harsh lines. So I'm going to focus the hand file around the cuticle area, the sidewalls, and the free edge. I'm going to graze over the entire surface of the nail but I'm not so much concentrating on the center of the nail as much as I am the perimeter of the nail. Those are the areas you want to be the thinnest and you want to keep the bulk in the center of the nail because that's what provides your nail with strength. That's what prevents your nail from breaking. Of course, I have little nublets. I don't have long nails, <laughs> so I'm not concerned with my nail breaking at all, but I still like that aesthetic of the curve, that natural sexy-ish curve to the top of the nail. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything blended down together. And I'm really doing this so gently. I don't apply any pressure when I'm doing any of my filing. Even when I use an e-file, there is no pressure. If you find that you are taking away too much product or too much color, too much pigment when you're filing, consider switching to a higher grit file. The higher the grit, the softer the file. So if you're using a 150 grit file and you're taking color away, try a 180 or a 240. So I'm gonna backpedal to lifting again because this type of filing, this contouring as I call it, or blending in, this is what can help also prevent against lifting. Typically when product is super thick around the edge or around the perimeter, that's where lifting can often happen. If you've ever had your nails done and then you go to take a shower sometime later, a couple of days, couple of weeks, and you find that your hair is getting stuck underneath your dip powder at the cuticle area, it could very well be due to product bulk. This is going to take down that bulk a little bit and make lifting less likely. So what I'm really trying to do 
is to get the back of the nail at the cuticle area to be as flush with my natural nail as possible. It'll prevent the lifting. It will also give a nice curve to the top of that nail, creating a seamless blend between your natural nail and the product. That way when it grows out, it's not an obvious gigantic ledge at the back of your nail, which is also gonna help you keep your dip powder on longer. If you have a giant ledge in the back of your nail, you're gonna wanna take it off. I understand because I've been there, but if you are trying to grow your nails out, which this is really good for, by the way, I don't know about healthy nail or any of that stuff. People claim this is better for your nail. I would disagree with that. I think this is just like any other nail enhancement. It's not good for your nail, but it's not necessarily bad for your nail. Um, but it will help your nails grow out because it protects your natural nail while they're growing. So the longer you leave your dip powder on with no lifting, the better your nails are gonna grow out. Now, if you have lifting, of course, you're gonna wanna do a removal because lifting can introduce moisture to that space between your nail and the product. And that can cause greenies and all sorts of weird issues that nobody wants. So if you're having lifting, definitely do a removal, but keep this on as long as possible and your nails will be able to grow out. Now that I've gotten all my blending done, I'm gonna go over everything with a fine buffing block. This is gonna take out any of the scratches because you don't wanna see scratches in your top coat and smooth everything out. And then we're gonna get into my top coat routine. So all the filing and buffing is done. At this point, you could go wash your hands. I'm just gonna de-dust with some of that swipe solution. You can use a dehydrator if you wanted to, or you can wash your hands like I mentioned. Um, but this is the point where we're gonna get everything off the nail. You don't want any dust, any debris, nothing, because we're gonna get into top coat. You want a super smooth, clean surface. So the first step to top coat is activator. Activator, again, cures your dip base and your dip top. This is gonna help your dip top coat to dry down and cure and be super glossy. So I'm gonna apply one coat of activator to each of the nails and let it dry for about two minutes. So after you've let the activator sit for a little bit, you're gonna take a paper towel or a lint-free wipe. And I'm essentially, it feels like I'm rubbing it in. I'm just taking off any activator residue that could be on the nail because once your top coat brush comes into contact with your nail and there's activator on it, that can quickly contaminate. So I wanna get that off. I'm gonna have a paper towel here because we're gonna clean off our brush in between every single nail. This is crucial if you do not want to contaminate your top coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the top coat. I'm gonna do three quick swipes on the nail and then clean off the brush before it goes back in the bottle and I move on to the next nail. So just to demonstrate that for you with a talk through, I'm gonna take a little bit of that product on the brush just like I was doing a base application, three quick stripes down the nail, wipe off the brush on both sides, back in the bottle, pick up some more product and move on to the next nail. I would highly suggest if you're doing both hands like a normal human, <laughs> you do one hand at a time. Don't try and do all 10 fingers and then go back one hand at a time. And then I'm gonna let this first coat dry down for just a few seconds. You don't need to wait very long. You're gonna see after I finish my thumbnail and show you what the nails are looking like, the nails are gonna look like they're a little bit wrinkly on top. That's usually a good tell that you're ready for your second coat of top coat. And you do have to do two. I don't know what the science is or the magic or the sorcery, but two is the magic number when it comes to dip top coat. So as you can see, 
it's starting to look a little bit wrinkly. So now I know that I can go in with my second coat. And I'm gonna do this the same exact way as I did the first coat. Although you can be a little bit slower and more detailed for the second coat. And on this round, I'm gonna cap my free edge so that's nice and sealed in and smooth. And then I'm gonna wipe the brush off both sides, back in the bottle, pick up more product, move on to the next nail. Now, if you're wondering how to get a matte look with this top coat, apply the top coat just as I'm showing you. And then when it dries down completely in about two to three minutes, go over it very gently with a buffing block and bam, matte top coat. Or you can skip the dip top coat altogether. You don't need a dip top coat, it is just for gloss. So you can skip it all together. You can also use regular nail polish top coat or gel top coat if you wanted to. Both work absolutely perfectly. If you're wondering about longevity, I would tell you to go the gel top coat route. That's just my personal preference, but the dip top coat works absolutely perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these dry down for about two to three minutes. You don't wanna move or touch nothing. <laughs> don't, even, don't even blink. Just wait until this dries. You're gonna have a little bit of patience, but in about two to three minutes, they'll be perfectly dry and you'll be done. So it's been about two minutes of sitting still and not breathing. <laughs> I'm alive. It's fine. We're all fine. And they have completely dried down. They're beautiful. They're glossy. And now the manicure is done. Um, here's what they look like from the side. As you can see, the blending put a nice little curve on top of the nail. They are not thick. They are not bulky. I'm going to finish up with some cuticle oil, which I think is essential if you're doing your nails, whatever you're doing to them. Cuticle oil will just help replenish them and keep the skin around them super healthy it also it can what <laughs> can also help with nail growth so if you're wondering about how you remove these again i mentioned this in the beginning of the video but if you're wondering about how to do a removal i'll leave that up in the cards and down in the box so you can check that out if you want let me know if you have any questions down below definitely let me know if you feel like this is helpful if it is you can give me a thumbs up it actually really helps out my channel and i would super appreciate it if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Why not? It's free, unless you have commitment issues. And that's fine, I won't judge you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will catch you in the next one. Love you, bye.